Hello, my beloved students. You're welcome back again to our practical section. And in this particular class, we are going to be determining the mass of a substance by using a system of equilibrium and a force board. To help me achieve that, I have here a force board with me and a plain sheet of paper, a single pulley, a thread, a set of masses. This is the unknown mass that we are going to deduce the, the value and then these are known masses that would be used during the experiment in order to deduce the unknown mass. So with me here is a thread fixed at point A and passes through the pulley at point C and then downwards where the unknown mass will be hung. This line is behind the thread and we can label the line AC. Now I would find the midpoint of this line and at that point I would hang in another thread at that particular midpoint. So here is the midpoint of the line and that is at point 19.8. At that midpoint I would use a protractor to find the normal and then draw a line, a straight line um, on the plain sheet of paper. and. I would hang in another thread which will follow that line during the course of the experiment. So here is what the final setup is like. So this is the thread. Now the essence of the line is just to guide us to make sure that during the course of the experiment that we maintain um, the midpoint all through. Now here is the unknown mass hung at the free end of the force board here from the pulley. And now I am going to hang in um, a known mass of 70 gram at this center point. So starting with a known mass of 70 gram, I am going to find out the depression from the original AC line. And this is what I have here. So I'm going to denote that using a pencil and then continue. At the end of the day, I would have to um, collate and measure out the, the length or the depression. So I'm going to go ahead and just mark it so that at the end of the day, I'll just do the measurements all together. So here is a point. In order not to distort, I'll just simply put my mark here and go ahead to add another 20 gram mass to make it a total of 90 grams and then also mark the depression. So this is what we have. Always align. That is the reason why we drew the line. Always align your thread along the center line. So this is what I have here is align. I'll go ahead and note my mark. I'll also proceed and add another 20, making it a total of 110 grams. So here is it aligned also. I'll proceed and mark the point there and also add another 20 until I get to 150. So let me add another 20 gram mass. So I have a total of 130 here. I'll go ahead and mark the, the line. And finally, I would now go ahead and put the last 20 gram mass to make it a total of 150 grams. So this is my 150 gram firmly positioned. I'll go ahead and mark the under part of it. So here's what I have. So I have all the points from, from the midpoint. Here's 70 gram, 90 gram, 110 gram, 130, and then 150. Now that I don't have the disturbance of the thread, I'd go ahead and, and do the measurement proper. So here is the final representation of the practicals. So you can see that the distance from, from B to O1 here, which I call Y, is equal to 7.5 according to what I measured. And then from B to O2 here is 9.0 according to what I marked. And then all from B to O3 at this point is 11.5.
B204 here is 16.0 and B205 here is 21.0 cm. While from point A to O, A to O here is 21.2 uh, cm and A to O2 here is 21.7 cm. A to O3 here is 23.0 cm. A to O4 here is 25.5 cm and A to O5 here is 28.9 cm. This is the accurate measurement based on what I did during the experiment. Now I'm going to tabulate these read readings um, in a table and then I would plot a graph of M which is the known mass on the vertical axis and then I would plot a graph of this Y all over AO on the horizontal axis. And then I'll show you more on, of the theory and how that we can be able to deduce the unknown mass. So here is a breakdown of our table. You can see from the table that um, M, Y, AO, and Y over AO are all arranged and tabulated accordingly. So I would plot a graph of M against A over AO. And this is what the graph looks like. Now from the graph, you can see that it's a straight line graph, although not from the origin. Now the slope of this graph as deduced will be a change in the mass, the known mass M over a change in the ratio of Y over AO. And that would be 192.6 gram, as you can see. Now, the theory behind this experiment is that the system, as you can see from the drawing, is in equilibrium under three different forces. One, a tension force as a result of the string, the load or the weight, the weight mg, that is from the known mass, and the weight, small letter mg, as a result of the unknown mass. Hence, by symmetry, the strings are equally inclined at angle theta to the vertical. Therefore, for vertical equilibrium of mass M, which is the known mass, 2T cos theta is equal to Mg. And from geometry, we can deduce that cos theta is equal to Y over AO. So if we put all this together, we can derive that capital M or the ratio of capital M to two small letter M is equal to Y over AO. And if we make M subject formula, we would get that 2M is equal to the ratio of capital M all over Y over AO. And that is our slope. So it means that our slope is equivalent to 2M. So if we make, finally make M or deduce M, M will be equivalent to 96 0.3 grams. So now to compare the magnitude of this mass as gotten from our graph with the actual value which we could get from this electronic balance, I will just measure the mass from this electronic balance and this is what I would have. So here is the zero point. 999 so when you compare it with what we've gotten from our graph, you will see that that the value differ a bit from what we have here, and that can be explained from some ex from the experimental point of view, either as a result of my choice of line of best fit or some experimental error. The precautions are straightforward. You would have to avoid any form of drought during the experiment, and then ensure that the the mass is not leaning on any any table is not leaning on the first board whatsoever also i avoided parallax error in reading the meter rule or the protractor during the experiment so i believe that this has been of help to you please always click the like button subscribe and always stay stay tuned for more videos